It's an old-timey comic book store. What we do is we sell comics, but we don't do anything else. No, no games, no cards, no, no dice, none of that garbage. All we do is sell comics. I think there's such a, there's such a thing as uh, a collector's gene. I think you have it, because I collected bottle caps and matchbook covers. and I was always collecting something. I think there's something there. But when I decided to get into comic books, there was something that clicked. I still remember, this is 1966, being a kid, going downtown. Back then was really funny because there weren't comic book stores back then. There were newsstands, and there were pool halls, and there were hotel lobbies, and drug stores, and porno places that sold, you know, sold comics. And you weren't old enough to go into those, the porno places. You know, I was very fortunate because there were, there were guys that were like three or four years older than me who were artists that were in my neighborhood that loved comics. And they loved it from a different perspective than just Spider-Man punching out Dr. Octopus. It's, it was like they were into art and they would talk about comics as Kirby comics or Ditko comics or Eisner comics. And it was like they were talking about the artists. It was all about the artists. And I was fascinated by that. I was very fortunate that I was around people that love comics because comics at their best are great storytelling. And that's what comics are all about, is being able to tell, visually tell a story. A lot of them will tell you, they can speed you up and they can slow you down. Visually, they know how to place the word balloons. To... They think about everything because they're just as obsessive about it as the fans. I started getting into that where I would go, Wait a minute, Sam Glansman did this, I gotta have it. Wait a minute, Gil Kane did that, I gotta have it. And it was like that. I start, you know, Neil Adams, I gotta have it. And I start buying these things. It just kept mushrooming from there. So I was a natural person to get into the retail end of it because I had a passion, you know, a passion for comics, a love for comics. It's tough because the first thing you have to do when you size up a customer that comes in is you ask them what do you like to read? Do you have any knowledge of it? I mean, there's, what's your history? For example, if he's 40 years old and he's still reading Legion Superhero, the chances are he's happy just doing that. But a lot of times you'll see younger people they'll be reading, and when they get into high school, they discover cars and girls, and they kind of disappear. And what my job would be is to say, well, it's time for you to leave maybe some of the superhero stuff behind. If you like it, buy it, sure, but maybe I'll try this, and try to move them up the evolutionary scale and, and slowly get them towards the better stuff. And when you've read as many comics as I have through the years, you know where you have to take your step slowly. If somebody comes in, they've never read a comic book, it's really important to try to get them something good because then they'll go, wow, this was really exciting. Because comic books at, at its purest sense, visual storytelling, it's original, it's an, art, it's an American art form. There's nothing else like it. I'm an old timer, so my attitude is they're not as good as they used to be, but there are really good examples out there of stuff that you can pick up and go, wow, this is really something. This is really special. You know, Moonshine, uh, I like that. I like the fix. I read that for a good while. You know, I don't read the superhero stuff like I used to because I read hundreds and hundreds of comics, superhero comics, so I, I kind of got burned down on superheroes a little bit, but that's the way it goes. They're like the bridge between the printed word and the motion picture. That's what comic books are. And at their best, at their zenith, with Eisner and Ditko and, and Joe Kubert, some of those guys could tell a story, a visual story, and they can and you can't get it any other way. There's stories that Alex Toth did that I had guys walk up to me after I put out the book. They say, if you see Alex, tell him that I read the story, Daddy and the Pie, and I started crying. Because comics can do that. They can make you happy, they can make you sad. And that's what makes them so unique. I couldn't, I couldn't be happier than being here. I, I love talking about comics. Imagine that. Me talking about comics. But that's what I do.